British Columbia, Canada, Dr. Glenn McPherson says he heard a strange humming sound in his home. At first, he thought it was an appliance. Ultimately, I cut the power to the entire house, and the sound got louder. Then he discovered he was not alone. This is, in fact, a worldwide phenomenon, and I'm calling it the worldwide hum. Check out his Hum Map Data Project. To date, some 17,000 civilians and scientists from around the world who call themselves hummers have reached out to him, saying they heard the same thing. McPherson thinks the mysterious hum could be caused by low-frequency sound waves. Uh, I, I should right away, though, jump in and say that I think there are some things to be concerned about. Um, uh, recently, about a week or two ago, I was looking through uh, Stanford University's VLF group, uh, who's responsible for a good number of the experiments happening at HARP. Um, and uh, the experiments themselves are, they seem legitimate. I mean, and one of the purposes, for example, of HARP was to use these high frequency radio waves to essentially, um, uh, in some cases, a, a paint is the word they use. Uh, into the ionosphere, which then can generate ELF and DLF radio waves, which can be used for communication. That's, that's one of the purposes. HARP has been the uh, focus of a lot of fear and loathing, and uh, I, I, I'm by no means an expert on HARP, um, but I think from what I've read, there are some things to be concerned about. But again, because of the timeline, I think that we can set HARP aside uh, specifically as it relates to the world hum. Uh, I don't think we can go back much earlier than 1985 from what I've read um, on heart and, and of course the hum, the hum predates that. It's 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm suddenly aware of this buzzing, pulsating noise a bit like a distant drill or angle grinder. But it's not just a noise. It feels like my inner ear is vibrating. That was my first experience of the hum. After that, I started noticing it most days, although it wasn't there all the time. At first, I thought it was neighbors getting work done on their houses, but then I started noticing it some nights as well. I tried unplugging the Wi-Fi, the fridge, turning the electricity supply off, but it was still there. My husband started calling me electro-hypersensitivity girl. He couldn't hear it. Then I started Googling strange hum in North Bristol, and that's when I discovered this thing called the Bristol hum. Going into the box made absolutely no difference whatsoever to my perception of the hum. If anything, Maybe even it got louder. Inside Edition producer Brianna Deutsch climbs inside the coffin-like box to test it out. She hears no hum. It's pretty dark. <laughs> now listen to these strange booms that sound almost from another planet. It could be a sonic boom from a fighter jet breaking the sound barrier. Another possibility, a meteor. <laughs> This home security camera in Bridgewater, New Jersey, actually caught the flash and then the sound of a meteor. A huge explosion, loud enough and strong enough to knock the pictures off my walls and shatter the glass all over the place. That may help explain some of the booms, but others remain a weird mystery. The Earth's magnetic field plays a role in how DLF radio waves travel, so I think that the Earth's magnetic field indeed is actually part of the picture. Uh, I think because of, again, we can hear reports of the hum over, over uh, ice, ice pack, over, over desert. It's not entirely clear. The, this, this sound, and we'll just use the word sound, uh, has, such a, has such unusual behavior that uh, there, there are several possibilities, and I mean, I'm I'm willing to uh, keep an open mind to uh, the possibility that in, in many cases, what is reported as the hum is nothing more than the grand accumulation of human activity. Everything from uh, high-speed traffic noise to uh, mines, hydroelectric dams, uh, high-pressure gas pipelines, 
all of these things create a sound, and notably, many of these things create infrasound. And uh, that itself is a fascinating topic. Um, actually, Europe in, in general, and Germany and the Netherlands in particular, are quite a bit ahead of us on this topic. The, and mainly because of the history, but also maybe because of the population density and other factors, um, this, this topic is, has been normalized uh, throughout, throughout England and in particular the Netherlands and, and, and Germany. Uh, what are they doing? Well, um, numbers of studies have been, uh, have been conducted uh, looking at the possible roles, for example, of wind, windmill farms or the electric grid itself. And uh, as, as in other studies, the, the conclusions are murky and nothing clear uh, has come out no plan of action, no, no scientific conclusion. Um, I get contacted quite regularly from, uh, by, by people who tell me that they are TI, that is, targeted individuals. Now, allow me to say, uh, just briefly, drifting to the edge of politics here, that um, there is ample evidence that the American government has, has targeted individuals. I think that if any listeners are not familiar with the COINTEL program, I think they should get themselves educated on that. However, with regard to uh, the HUM and the people who claim to be targeted individuals, they are proposing mechanisms which um, do not exist in science. Many people will try to claim that there have been experiments, for example, in beaming actual speech and actual thoughts into people's heads. And I can tell you that that's actually been tried. Then it changes from a scientific problem to a problem, to a political problem, and to people getting organized and, and essentially demanding that, um, that, we be, that we be freed uh, uh, from this. I'm not tortured by the hub, but many, many people are. There's a lot that we know now <clears throat> about the worldwide hum that we didn't know five years ago <clears throat> regarding average age of hum hearers, um, geographical distributions, and that sort of thing. Taking all that new data into account, in my view, there are four theories that survive the most trivial examination. These have been written about in detail on my blog, which you can find uh, linking to off the main website at thehum.info. It's an unsolved mystery keeping this neighborhood awake at night. It sounds like 50 trucks starting up when, it, when it's very loud. What is it? There are a lot of theories. Spaceships uh, from outer space to American military um, installations. Tonight, the defenders on the case of the mysterious Windsor Hum. A persistent noise, sometimes compared to an idling truck or the distant rumbling of thunder, is plaguing many who live across the Detroit River. The noise is known as the Windsor Hum, mysteriously heard on the Canadian side, but very few, if any, complaints on the Detroit side of the river. It's a mystery that's been plaguing this Canadian community for nearly seven years. It sounded like 15 trucks around our house starting up, big transports. That's Debbie McDonald. She loves the home and the yard she has in Windsor. But she didn't expect the noise. We had just built the house. Um, a couple weeks in, uh, we started feeling the windows sh shake and you know, couldn't figure out what was going on. McDonald isn't the only one complaining. A Facebook page dedicated to the Windsor Hum with more than 2,000 members all posting when they hear that strange noise. The sound I was hearing was like a, a low frequency pulsing, like a, almost like thunder. The constant steady buzz or hum, it, does nev it never goes away. That's Mike Provost. He not only runs the Facebook page on the Windsor Hum. That's it. But records daily the sounds he hears from his West Windsor backyard. 
So you basically made a makeshift laboratory in your backyard. Yeah. Provost has three different recording devices. The same as the other ones. Placed in different locations. We can triangulate it with the third one. To record noise. And you can see the numbers. He also makes daily logs from his backyard on what he hears, marks down the temperature, the wind speed, other factors going on that day. It's partly cloudy. So you save the data from every single day. Then inputs everything into his computer. Every day, every week, every month. He's been doing this for years. And this is all the people and the times they posted. And keeps track of neighbors' comments. Said, what the heck's going on out there? It is really, really loud. I've never heard it like that. He said, it sounds like a thousand jets flying over. Provost, let me listen to one of the recordings. Because of weather conditions, it, it seems louder, a cloud cover and that. I could faintly hear a buzz. Now all the background has been removed from that. But honestly, could not decipher the sound. The hum is still there, although it, it certainly doesn't have the same frequency that it, that it did in, in its heyday, and it doesn't have the same intensity. Professor Colin Novak should know, as a professor at the University of Windsor, he was assigned to study the hum. Because it's a cross-border issue, that's when the federal government became involved. The professor and his team started their study in 2013 with sophisticated sound recording devices operating 24-7. One morning, uh, we did get an alert, and we went and checked the data and it was definitely um, the characteristics of, of, of the hum. What does it sound like, feel like? It would sound like a big truck or even a, a, a train engine parked outside of your house idling out in the street. So it would have this low frequency rumble to the point where it could even cause your windows to rattle a little bit. He shared his recordings with me. And you can just barely hear it. So where is the sound coming from? Other people thought it were wind turbines. Um, some of the more realistic theories were it could be from the salt mines. Many, including the professor, point the finger here to Zug Island, where U.S. Steel has a plant. We never did find that smoking gun, but through extensive analysis of what sources of noise are on the island, uh, the one source that could potentially produce this type of noise with this much energy uh, and at this frequency would be the blast furnaces. Security is tight around the island. Gates and barricades don't allow the public on. Did you ever ask to go on the island? There was a request uh, through the federal government um, for cooperation. And from what I've been told is that we were told that, no, we would not be permitted to, to go within the gates. The defenders put a request into U.S. Steel for an interview about this mysterious hum. Our request was denied. Really, unless some researchers have access to the site and can do a, a, a thorough scientific investigation, I think we're all going to be left wondering. So the mystery and the hum continue. As a scientist, of course it intrigues me. We just want somebody to admit. And you can bet Mike Provost will also continue his daily logging. 12.30, rumbling in the, in the roar. Of the unsolved noise. In Windsor, Karen Drew, Local 4 Defenders. Attach themselves to. I know on the World Hum Map, when you take a look at the report that said uh, the hum.info, um, uh, you will see a lot of very articulate, a lot of well-reasoned uh, commentary and, and, and reports. I think what it will take is people who are willing to uh, bank on whatever public credibility they have. People in positions of responsibility need to come forward. I happen to live in a, in a very small town, and uh, there, there, was a price, there was a price to be paid. Um, for uh, coming out and uh, being honest and open uh, about what it is that we are experiencing. But if, it seems to me that if we have any responsibility in this world, it's re not only are we responsible for what we do, we're responsible for what we can do.